Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of external ear. External ear has two parts. One is the auricle, another one is the external auditory meatus. So this is the auricle and this is the external auditory meatus. Okay, the auricle receives sound wave and transmits the sound wave to the tympanic membrane. Auricle is composed of elastic cartilage. So, it is composed of elastic cartilage covered by skin. The non cartilaginous lobule consists of fibrous tissue, fat, and blood vessel. This is the lobule. Okay. If you look at the external ear, this is irregular shape and it varies from person to person in, in its size. Okay, so we have the tragus, we have the anti tragus, inter tragic notch is here, and this is a lobule without any cartilage. This part is the concha, then this is the helix, this is the anti helix. These are the crura of the anti hex we have some fossa here and here the auricle has the following features helix, helix anti helix concha tragus and lobule external auditory meatus is an ear canal that passes inward through the tympanic part of the temporal bone this is the external auditory meatus extending from here to the tympanic membrane outer layer of the tympanic membrane it is partly cartilaginous this is cartilage this is elastic cartilage and partly bony this is bony part of the temporal bone the tympanic part of the temporal bone okay the ear has small muscles and these muscles are not very active they are small rudimentary but they have definitely nerve supply like the facial nerve innervates them we have the auriculars posterior auriculars superior auriculars anterior has not been shown here they connect the ear to the skull bone and we have some intrinsic muscle, small intrinsic muscle like helicus major, helicus minor, and anti tragicus muscle. This is a small muscle, this is a tragicus muscle. These muscles are not very active in human. They are rudimentary, almost non-functional, although they have nerve supply, like the facial nerve. The external auditory meatus is an ear canal about 2 to 3 cm in adults. Lateral third is S shaped. This part is S shaped, partly S shaped, cartilaginous and lined with skin, continuous with auricular skin. Medial two third, this part is continuous with the external layer of the tympanic membrane. This is the tympanic membrane. This is the middle ear cavity. Okay. This is a part of the internal ear, the semicircular canal here. Earwax is very common complaint. The ceruminous and sebaceous gland in the subcutaneous tissue of the cartilaginous part of the external auditory canal here. And this may be this may impact the Passes may lead to conductive type of deafness. This part may be blocked by the earwax. It has pungent smell, it has some protective role of the external auditory canal. But if it is much, then it may cause conductive type of deafness. Okay. External ear nerve supply. External ear get nerve supply from multiple sources like that of the 
auricular temporal branch of the mandibular nerve, the great auricular nerve from the cervical plexus, lesser occipital nerve from cervical plexus. We have also contribution from the vagus nerve here. Motor innervation by the facial nerve, these are the sensory innervation. Motor innervation to the small muscles of the ear. Okay. We got there. Then we go to the blood supply. Blood supply are branches of the external carotid artery, like the social temporal artery, the like that of the posterior auricular artery. Even it get contribution from the occipital artery, from the maxillary artery. Some branch may come here. Lymphatic drainage to the parotid lymph node, mastoid lymph node, and upper deep cervical lymph node. We learn the congenital anomalies of the external ear. Okay. Here, size, shape vary from person to person. But congenital anomaly of the ear, of the external ear, is very important to us. Not only anomaly, also the low set ear is important to us. This may be associated with chromosomal anomaly like trisomy 18, Edward syndrome, maybe trisomy 21. Down syndrome may be associated with anomalies in the external ear, maybe low set ear. Or this anomaly may be associated with first R syndrome, may be a part of the Pierre Rubin syndrome or Treacher Collins syndrome. Other anomaly like anotia, no ear, anotia, or microtia, small tear. Pre-auricular sinus may be present here. Auricular fistula also may be possible. That fistula connects the skin to the to the platine tonsil area or to the tympanic membrane, tympanic cavity area. There will be atresia of the external auditory meatus. It may be totally absent. That may be due to non-development of the first pharyngeal group or lack of recanalization of the of the plug here during embryogenesis. So there is no external auditory meatus here. So this will lead to conductive type of deafness. Okay. We learn some clinical anatomy, otoscopy, very common practice. By otoscope, we look inside the ear, external auditory meatus. We look at the outer surface of the tympanic membrane. We can assess, is there any collection of fluid in the middle ear cavity? Is there any bulging of the tympanic membrane? Color of the tympanic membrane? Is there any perforation of the tympanic membrane? Okay, we can, all can be assessed by otoscopy. Idea is that otoscopy, because it is the outer cartilage part is carved like S, partially S. So, when do otoscopy, we pull the ear upward, backward, so that we can put the otoscope inside the ear. So, by otoscopy, we can assess the infection inside the middle ear cavity, also in the external auditory meatus. Okay. And that's all about the anatomy of the external ear. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Please share the information with your friends. And please support my channel. Please subscribe me. And have a nice day. Bye now.